And the U.S. Supreme Court has agreed to hear arguments for the Colorado case that ruled former President Trump ineligible to run for federal office. The justices will review the decision from the Colorado State Supreme Court that said the former president engaged in insurrection on January 6th and therefore is barred from the ballot by the 14th Amendment. The case will be argued before SCOTUS on an accelerated timeline with proceedings beginning on February 8th. The former president commented on the Supreme Court's decision to hear the case at a rally in Iowa on Friday. Some big things going in there. I just saw the Supreme Court just before I came. I got some beauties today. I had the one, and then I had the other. The Supreme Court uh, is taking the case from Colorado, and so they'll make a decision. And uh, they're saying, oh, Trump owns the Supreme Court. He owns it. He owns it. If they make a decision for him, it will be terrible. It'll ruin their reputations. He owns the Supreme Court. He put on three judges. He owns the Supreme Court. If they rule in his favor, it will be horrible for them. And I just hope we get fair treatment, uh, because if we don't, our country's in big, big trouble. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? I think so. No, I understand wow. nothing. Nothing of what you're saying. Wow. Let's bring in right now the president, the CEO of the National Constitution Center and professor of law at George Washington University, Jeffrey Rosen. He's also a contributing writer at the Atlantic. Jeffrey, a lot to talk about uh, right now, but first let's let's talk about uh, the the last issue, and that is uh, the Colorado case going before the United States Supreme Court. Um, I, I am skeptical that the court will follow uh, what the Colorado Supreme Court did, um, but I've heard arguments on both sides, legal arguments on both sides uh, from actually conservatives suggesting if you're a constitutional conservative uh, like uh, Judge Luddick, uh, that the court should uphold the Colorado uh, decision. What, what, are your, uh, what are your views on how this is going to go? Absolutely. As you say, it really poses a clash for the court between the conservative justice's commitment to textualism and originalism and the desire to find a pragmatic solution. Conservative scholars like Judge Ludwig have argued powerfully that the text of the Constitution requires Trump's exclusion from the ballot and that the 14th Amendment is self-executing. In other words, there's no need for Congress to pass enabling legislation before people can be disqualified. And therefore, the justices who ordinarily care about text and history should disqualify him. On the other hand, as, as, as you suggested, they may be reluctant to have uh, to, to kick him off the ballot and be concerned about the chaos that would uh, result. And that threat that President Trump just made at the end of the clip you played is really uh, sobering. And yeah. for all those reasons, the, the, the justices might not intervene. An another real dilemma for them is Bush v. Gore. In Bush v. Gore, they exalted pragmatic considerations like avoiding chaos and refuse to follow original understanding. Why, why shouldn't they uh, follow original understanding here? Uh, so it's, it's just no easy answer for the court, but a very dramatic clash between the ordinary way that they go about these cases and the way that they may be inclined to rule this time. Such a high-stakes decision indeed. Uh, Jeffrey, let's turn to one of the other headlines we just touched upon, which is Trump's claim of immunity. We know that's going to appeal. The, we have a hearing this week on that. Forecast for us, if you will, how you see that playing out, not just this week, but potentially in the months ahead. Well, uh, the court um, has decided not to intervene for now. Many people expect the D.C. courts to reject a sweeping claim of presidential immunity. Never before has the court suggested that a president is immune from all criminal prosecution, quite the contrary. And then the question is, do the justices just want to affirm that without hearing it themselves, or would they like to hear full arguments uh, to reach a contrary, uh, to, 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 to affirm? Because I, I don't think anyone expects a really sweeping immunity claim to go forward. Um, around the same time, they'll be hearing the obstruction claim that Jack Smith has raised, uh, whether or not President Trump can be charged with obstruction of Congress in connection with January 6th. And balancing those two cases at the same time as Colorado is just going to put them at the center of the election. So on Colorado, would you be surprised if it were 9-0, uh, if it were a 9-0 ruling overturning the Colorado case? 
you know, that's what Chief Justice Roberts is going to want. All, all of the justices would prefer a 9-0. The idea of a 6-3 or a 5-4 to four on this one would be devastating Ugh. for the court completely. It's just hard to think of what a, a really clear 9-0 would look like. But if, if it exists, they'll, they'll come up with it. Right. All right. Jeff Rosen, thank you thank so you. much. His yeah. new book thank is you. entitled The Pursuit of Happiness, How Classical Writers of, on vir Virtue Inspired the Lives of the Founders and Defined America. It will be published on February 13th. Can't and wait we to look forward to Cannot that. Cannot wait to read that. Yeah, and Jeffrey, come back, back please. Yeah.